You know when you have access to that insider who can give you that piece of information that you would only ever get if you knew someone who was in the know or if you were in the know yourself? Well, I am that insider for you in the world of cleaning because some of you might know this, but some of you might not. I have owned a cleaning company since 2006. That's how I got my start in the cleaning world. I cleaned hundreds of places before I ever started filming a YouTube video. Now that cleaning business is still going strong today. We service thousands of clients a month and I am here putting up these videos, but I'm constantly researching, practicing and learning the best new cleaning techniques so that I can teach my staff that information and go out and do the very best job. So in this video, I'm going to share with you seven things that expert cleaners know that your average person who cleans doesn't know. I'm going to teach you how to be more effective and more efficient with your cleaning so that you can clean like a pro without having to hire one. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, remember to turn on that notification bell so that you always know when a new Clean My Space video has come up. And give this video a thumbs up if you are somebody who likes to save time instead of waste time, particularly when it comes to cleaning. The majority of cleaning needs that any given home has can be handled with very basic cleaning products. Now, of course, when you go to the cleaning aisle, you might feel befuddled because there are so many different options and so many different products. But for all intents and purposes, you need the basics to get the majority of the work done in your home. Now, if you encounter a particular unique issue in your home, for example, a clogged drain or a particular stain that you really can't get rid of, mold or mildew, or something that needs a specialty product, by all means, hit the shelves, buy the specialty thing. But for your everyday general cleaning jobs, you can handle that with dish soap, water, baking soda, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and those very simple pantry cleaning items. Now, we have tons of DIY recipes here on the Clean My Space YouTube channel and also over on cleanmyspace.com. What I'm trying to tell you here is save your money, keep it simple, and render down your cleaning needs to the most basic cleaning supplies. That way you can get the most done for the least amount of money. One of the easiest ways to waste time when you're cleaning is to run around looking for different cleaning products and tools. Instead, in the professional cleaning world, what we do is we collect everything ahead of time, prepare all of our products and tools. So we sort of go in, assess the room ahead of doing any cleaning. We think about, okay, it's like an anticipatory thing. What am I going to need? Products, tools, techniques, PTT. You've probably heard me talk about that before. Step two is then to go and collect all of those products and tools that you're going to need and then bring it back to the space and start your cleaning then and there. I have seen people waste so much time running around looking for that bottle of glass cleaner, looking for that forgotten microfiber cloth. Instead, have everything with you in your space, keep it close, do your work, and then move on. Once I started Clean My Space, my service company, and I actually learned about professional cleaning, I learned something really simple. Professional cleaners have a plan of action. They know when they go into a room exactly what they need to do. So I created my very own. We call it the three wave system. I teach my staff the three wave system. That is how I clean my house. That is uh, what I wrote about in my book. And I talk about it here on the Clean My Space channel a lot. We just made a video on it. I will link that for you down below. And the reason I'm such a believer in this three wave process is because it works. It tells you exactly what to do each and every time you get into a room. You go around the room three times in a clockwise motion. You work from top to bottom. You tackle very specific things during each wave so that you know by the time that third wave has hit and you are walking out the door, everything is done. It is the most efficient way to clean a space. I don't want to waste time as a professional cleaning business owner because I need my staff out there cleaning and earning money. And if they're wasting their time, time is money. Sometimes when we think about cleaning a room, we think about it holistically and it feels overwhelming because there can be so many things to accomplish in a room. 
Cleaning doesn't have to be that complicated. In fact, if you think about your room and you think about what are the areas that are most important to you, you can then prioritize when you're cleaning to focus on those areas and the things that aren't as important you can easily leave those for another day. Now in the professional cleaning space, this looks like what's called task rotation. So some cleaning businesses might say, well, we won't do your baseboards every visit, but we'll do them every fourth visit. That way, you know your baseboards are getting cleaned occasionally, but because we know they're not the most important thing, we've deprioritized them. We'll tackle them from time to time, but we just won't do it every time. However, if a client called in and said, my baseboards must be cleaned each and every time, the cleaning company would then know, okay, we've got to clean those baseboards each and every time, and then we can deprioritize, say, window sills. You can take that and use that in your home. So what I call this in my world is MIAs or most important areas. So I like to go into a space and kind of look around and say, this is really important to me. This isn't so important to me. So for example, like baseboards aren't that important to me, but when they look gross, clearly I want them clean. So when I clean something, I'm not focusing, for example, my bathroom, I won't focus on cleaning the baseboards each time, but while I'm down there on the floor giving it a wipe down and I see something on the baseboard, I'll either do it then or I'll make a mental note for next time, okay, don't focus on cupboard doors next time, do baseboards instead. You can take this approach and apply it to any room in your home. It'll save you a lot of time when you're cleaning and it makes you feel less stressed and less guilty that you're not getting to everything right then and there. Something else very unique to the cleaning world that I learned when I first got started is the importance of pre-treating a surface. Now you can call this pre-treating, you can call this marinating if you're more a cook than a cleaner. Either way, you understand the concept. Basically, you're gonna take something, you're gonna soak it in the appropriate cleaning product, and you're gonna let the product do the work for you. I've said this many times, and when I bring this topic up to people who have never heard about it before, like, it's so exciting to them because it's almost as though I've turned a light on. But think about it like this. When you watch a cleaning product commercial on TV, this is basically what you see. Spray, 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 wipe, and then you hear like zing, and you see a star because everything looks clean and shiny. That's not reality. We've all been there, we've sprayed, we've wiped. It doesn't work that quickly. Products need time to work, but commercials, you pay by the second. So a company just has to like make it happen in 30 seconds. Whereas with you, you've actually got to work smart. So when you are in a space, particularly a grimy space like a kitchen or a bathroom, I like to soak the area and just let the product do the work for me. What this looks like, I'll walk in and like I say, I do an assessment of the space. So I say, okay, I've got soap scum in the tub and on the tiles. I want to pre-treat my sink, my mirror. I can just do that with a wipe, but the toilet needs a pre-treat as well. Then I get the appropriate products and I just soak all of the surfaces that need soaking. Then I'll start on my clockwise uh, at the 12 o'clock point so I can work my way around the room clockwise. And if a surface needs time to soak, I'll skip it and I'll come back to it when I know it's ready. Typically, I would leave something for between five and 10 minutes. By that time, the product has done what it is intended to do. Now, the wonderful thing about this is by the time you get there, all you have to do is just take your sponge or your cloth or your brush and simply wipe. Some people feel a level of anxiety when they open their Instagram DMs because they might see private part pictures. That's not what I worry about. What I get in my Instagram DMs are ruined countertops, very dirty toilets, scratched stainless steel. I see everybody's cleaning mistakes in my Instagram DMs and I actually find that um, funny in the world of Instagram, but not funny for the person who it happened to, of course. My first response whenever I see something like that is always, did you use the right product or tool or technique? Because using the wrong product tool or technique can ruin a surface and sometimes permanently, and sometimes it can be really expensive to fix. So when it comes to cleaning, it is very important, and this is something we train our staff on and something I try to espouse to you, please play it safe. Not only make sure that you are reading the product label so that you understand what it can 
and cannot be used on, but you're using the appropriate tool for the surface so you're not scratching or damaging that particular surface and making sure that you're taking good care of yourself. So you're wearing eye protection or gloves or you're properly ventilating a space. Whatever precautions you need to take to make sure that your body and your surfaces are safe during cleaning, I would say it is well worth the time to uh, investigate that. Because of course, when you read the back of a product, you only really ever have to read it once and then you know what you can and can't use it on. You don't have to do it every time. But investing that little bit of extra time can prevent some problems for you down the line. Sometimes I still find it absolutely laughable that I am what would be called a cleaning pro because you guys don't even know who I was before 2006 when I started Clean My Space biggest slob you have ever seen, someone who hated cleaning and cried about it. Like it was legit a real life problem for me. <laughs> and here I am talking about cleaning with all of you. But I'm so glad that I can do that and help you because I know so many of you struggle the way that I used to and frankly, the way that I sometimes still do. So that brings me to this week's comment question. And it is not about cleaning your home per se, but it is about staying at hotels. You see, we've been thinking about doing a video about hotels and the cleanliness there and kind of what goes into cleaning a hotel room because I think it's something we're all a little bit curious about. And when you think that the people who are cleaning hotel rooms are cleaning pros, I've seen those hotel room housekeepers. They are hard workers and they've got a lot of work to do. But I would love to know in the comments down below, what are your questions about hotel cleaning procedures or practices or what's a disaster story or a really gross story about a stay that you had once in a hotel. I remember there was a hotel that we stayed at one time with um, a friend of ours, Chad and I were in one room, they were in another room and like we don't want to be complainers or anything but we got into the hotel room and there was um, a very dark, long, short, curly, you know what, right on the beautiful white crisp bed. And then just to add insult to injury, I went to the bathroom and saw the very same hair on the toilet seat. You know, I have a tolerance, but I had to just pick up the phone and ask for a new room. And I don't think that's too dramatic. So tell me your story and tell me how you would have reacted to that in the comments down below. If you want to see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker Chad, is that the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us are at Clean My Space. If you like the Clean My Space channel and you want to support what we're doing, it is so easy. You just have to watch another video right after this one. YouTube loves that. And here are a couple that I think you might like. If you want to learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.